everyone is familiar with flat space or Euclidean geometry, triangles, squares, and trapeziums. However, how familiar are you with non-Euclidean geometry? Ever chanced upon triangles with angles some greater and smaller than 180 degrees, or planes where parallel lines never exists? If you have not, get ready because in today's video, we will be doing exactly that, seeing just how far we can push the limits of space and time. As with most maths, it started back in Greece. In 300 BCE, students' most hated figure and gifted mathematician, Euclid, had made a breakthrough into understanding time and space. It began with a two-dimensional flat plane, then the definition of angles and basic polygons such as circles and triangles. The shapes that we are all familiar with today, establishing the basics of Euclidean geometry. Hence, from fourth, this new spatial world did Euclid said the five axioms of Euclidean geometry that every Euclidean shape and figure abide by, and these are Firstly, for any two different points, there exists a line containing these two points, and this line is unique. Secondly, a straight line segment can be prolonged indefinitely. Thirdly, a circle can be constructed when a point for its centre and a distance for its radius are given. Four, all right angles are equal. And last but not least, and the most controversial axiom of all, for any line L and point P on, not on L, there exists a line through P not meeting L, and this line is unique. The fifth axiom is known as the parallel postulate. It's Monica referencing the unique properties of parallel lines. The con controversy stems from the mathematicians of old attempting to prove that the parallel postulate was a natural consequence of the first four axioms. After 2,000 years, nobody had yet succeeded. The story finally ends with three men, Gauss, Bolei, and Lobachevsky, who through trials and tribulations birthed hyperbolic geometry, a non-Euclidean geometry that strayed away from the parallel postulate, giving rise to the new hyperbolic postulate. For any infinite straight line L and any point P not on it, there are many other infinitely extending straight lines that pass through P and which do not intersect L. A new and foreign concept from what we're usually used to in Euclidean geometry. Although this is a topic about geometry, it is hard to visualize the, that how would the plane look like because we are used to flat plane geometry. However, that doesn't mean we can't see some interesting properties begin to emerge. As a direct result of the postulate that we just explained, the parallel lines in this new geometry looks rather odd being curved outwards. The Euclidean or flat space geometry, in which you can cover a plane with a set of four squares that are sharing a corner, is shown here. However, in this new kind of geometry, it takes five squares sharing the same corner to cover the same the entire plane. In addition, due to the way the plane is stretched and warped, the sum of angles in a triangle is no longer 180 degrees, but now any triangles on this space will have their angles summed to be less than 180 degrees due to reasons of angles at a point. For a while, this field had no names until a certain point, mathematicians decided to name it hyperbolic geometry. The reason behind it is rather complicated and takes a lot of math to explain. However, it doesn't mean that we can't see some semblance of hyperbola in hyperbolic geometry. Hyperbola is a part of co a conic section, or basically a curve obtained because a plane intersects with a cone. There are four types of conic sections. Circle, parabola, which look like a U or an N depending on how you look at it, and ellipse, and finally a hyperbola, which looks like two ends back to back. Hyperbola in hyperbolic geometry is also highly significant when it comes to hyperbolic geometry. Although it must be noted that the reason the space is called hyperbolic space is not because of the semblance with geometry. As earlier explained in the episode on trigonometry, there are three basic functions, namely sine, cosine, and tangent. In hyperbolic geometry, there is hyperbolic sine, sine h, hyperbolic cosine, cosine cos h, and hyperbolic tangent, tan h. 
In normal geometry, we can visualize trigonometry using a unit circle. Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and if we let the hypotenuse be 1, for central angle theta, the value opposite the angle will be sine of theta. Similarly, the value of the side adjacent will be cosine of theta. The value of tangent theta is illustrated by a tangent line, since tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent of the larger triangle. Now we'll be explaining, firstly, what is a unit hyperbola? One major difference between hyper hyperbolic and Euclidean geometry is that hyperbolic geometry doesn't use the unit circle to determine the value of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine and tangent. Instead, it uses a unit hyperbola, that is to say, the intersections of the hyperbolas are both one unit away from the origin. However, note that they are a pair of hyperbola curves that like, does not consist of function because it does not pass the horizontal line test. Now moving on to the coordinates in hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic geometry does not use angles as the input to the functions. However, it uses area. Pick a point on the unit hyperbola or hyperbola with formula x squared minus y squared equals to 1. Draw a line from the origin to the point along the curve. Now shade the area that is bound by the line, the hyperbola and the x-axis. The hyperbolic sign of double the shaded area is the x-coordinate of the point, while the hyperbolic cosine of, of double the area is the y-coordinate. Now we'll be discussing the respective shapes of hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent. The shapes are marked out, are marked out on the diagram. Then, similar to normal trigonometry, we can obtain a value of hyperbolic tangent by dividing hyperbolic sine with hyperbolic cosine. If we were to plot out each trigonometric function, the result would look like... Let's now discuss the respective mathematics expression to each shape. They can be respectively re-expressed as sine h x equals to e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x over 2, while cosine h x will be equal to e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x over 2, and tangent would be, the, um, would be sine h divided by cosine h. The manipulations, derivatives, and techniques for hyperbolic geometry will be the same as when we are dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Last but not least, let's discuss the applications of hyperbolic geometry. One application will be in the questions such as this, where a cable or a rope is at rest when being hung between two poles. The shape of the cable will simulate that of a cosine h function, cos h function. The reason behind this phenomenon can only be explained with, a, with advanced calculus and hence will be covered here. This concept is also helpful when explaining the cost of velocity when decreasing with air resistance as shown here. So today, we have seen hyperbolic geometry, what it, it is, appreciate its weirdness and the weirdness of the trigonometry that comes along with it, and see how it is applicable in finding the shape of a hung cable as well as different velocity cases. So that will be all for today. Don't, be, don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out because we'll see you soon.